Woohoo, okay, we're back. Hey, so we're gonna do this then because it's required for the event, and this time I won't quick stare it, I'll actually do it. So next time we'll get the event over with. It's uh, plenty of time left. Still nine days. Nearly ten. So anyway, this is the Wanderer one, I believe. Or figure out what to do with the Fandango, man. Come on, serious suggestions, please. I'm not trying to write a thriller here. It's supposed to be an essay, you understand? An essay. That means facts and logic. Well, if it's facts and logic you're after, you shot yourself in the foot with your choice of research topic, didn't you? The Tataris soon a mystery. When so much remains unexplained, there's little to be objective about. Unless, of course, you restrict yourself to textual criticism. Yeah, well, this is my teacher's area of research. I can't change that. But it's fascinating enough without having to sensationalize it, don't you think? The strange location, the missing details, a mysterious person. I want to write my essay on something interesting, and I'm interested in getting to the bottom of all this. That's the only reason I came to you. Yes, you came to me. So all the more reason to take my advice. The fact is, it's the dramatization that will make people want to read it. There's no getting around that. Uh, okay, but... Did one of them just mention Tatara Suna? But that's all the way in Inazuma! Is it just Paimon or is it kind of unusual for someone in Sumeru to want to write a paper about that? Uh, everyone here is just going about their business. Maybe it really is just Paimon. Guess people here are free to research pretty much anything. And yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. I'm pretty sure it's like the global center for research. I imagine they've kind of got to deal with a lot of things. Great. Let's go find out what this Tatara Suna mystery is all about. I mean... Canonically, this is like the only place... Canonically, this is the only place we've been to that had a school. Of any kind. Alright, I guess I'll go with my textual criticism and your editorial direction for the first draft. I have a feeling that the missing Kabuki Mono will end up being the main focus of this paper. Ugh, if only we knew where to find that traveler. From what they say about her, this seems like the kind of thing she'd know about. Oh. You're the Traveler, you say? Hmm... Hey, what's with that face? Don't believe us? No, no! Of course I believe you! Actually, I first heard about your great exploits when I was still in Inazuma. This is my first time coming face to face with you and your mysterious silver-haired companion. I couldn't believe my luck, and out of force of habit I started... Uh... Examining the evidence. Sorry. So what, for the love of... <laughs> Sorry, we don't get out much, so our social skills are kind of lacking. Uh, Traveler, I hear you've helped many people a great deal and been to many places. Would you be able to tell us about Tatarasuna? Actually, we don't know much about that place either. In fact, we only came over here because we heard you talking about it and wanted to learn more. Ah... Uh... I see. My teacher chose this area of research as a personal challenge. He said it's difficult to get into because even Inazumans don't know much about Tatarasuna's past. But who'd have thought that, uh... If you don't mind, I'd love to show you all my outline for the book I'm writing about Tatarasuna. Uh, hold on, Sawada. Don't you think that's a bit of a deep dive for a first read? Well, fair point. 
In that case, please ease yourselves in gently by taking a look at Akaba's latest essay draft. Let me give you some background. This all started with the discovery of some records in Tatarasuna. The writings mentioned someone by the name of Mikoshi Nagamasa, who crafted a fine blade. But in the end, he threw it into a fire to destroy it, and killed his servant Katsuragi. Why? Well, no one knows. Apart from the sword maker, his servant, and the one who wrote this all down, the records also mention a kabuki mono. This seems to be an Inazuman word for an eccentric stranger. Someone who dresses funny or acts in an unusual way. That's right. Akaba's teacher has spent quite some time researching these events on the ground. This kabuki mono lived in Tatara Suna for a while before disappearing without a trace. And shortly afterwards, as Akaba mentioned, things got pretty ugly. So first this strange person goes missing, then a murder happens? Mm, seems kind of fishy to Paimon. Yes, my thoughts exactly. So I helped out too. I asked everyone I could think of if they knew anything about what happened back then. And wow, did I get lucky! Stop shouting! This part's important. I just wanted to make it stand out. It just so happens that a friend of mine works at the government records office. He looked into it for me, and I can now confirm that all the aforementioned individuals did, in fact, live in Inazuma over 400 years ago. Even back then, Tatara Suna was already at the center of Inazuma's smelting industry. The man in charge was a government official named Niwa. Curiously enough, it seems like he went missing too. Could it be? Yeah. Wait, so there are two missing people in the story now? That's right! What's more, Niwa is a name with a lot of history to it. Have you ever heard of the great swordsmith clans of Inazuma? Oh, the swordsmiths? Yeah, um, like Ishin Art and so on? You literally just did Kazuo's quest. Wow, yes. You really know your stuff. That makes things easier. So, basically, this Niwa was a distant relative of the Kaidahara clan, the last practitioners of Ishin Art. Something then seems to have happened in the Kaidahara clan, leading to their downfall. I don't know the details, but taken in light of everything else going on around that time, it makes you wonder whether it's all connected somehow. The Kaidahara clan? Sawada, so you left out the biggest detail of all. Well, that explains uh, why Ka Kazuha's quest was a prerequisite for this one. Oh, yes, of course. How could I forget? Brace your minds, ladies and gents, for they are about to be blown. Or maybe you won't believe your ears. I wouldn't blame you, of course, because in all my years as a writer, this is by far the most. Get to the point, for Pete's sake. According to information acquired by Akaba's teacher, the Kabuki Mono was not a human, but a puppet. So they know all this then? They know he's a puppet? Well, I guess I don't know who the Kabuki Mono was, but they know he's a puppet, which is more than I would have expected from a couple random researchers. A puppet? Aha! Judging by the looks on your faces, you do know something after all. Uh, <laughs> uh, no! Paimon just meant... Uh, <laughs> how creepy! The way you described it makes it sound like a ghost story. I agree, it does. But considering that non-human races in Inazuma are by no means uncommon, spooky events are to be expected. And that's exactly what my book is about. Please, take a look! Author Sawada. Ah, uh, boy. You know, we're reading it all. Fuck it. The Isle of Darkling Clouds. Author Sawada. Extract 1. A man arrived in Taratsuna around 3 in the afternoon from a fiery spied laborers walking along the mountain roads toward the factories. 
They're just scuffing with the, along the jutting stones. They walk like people convinced that so long as they reach the fire, raging in the mountain's belly, they might extract from it gems beyond price. The mood that the sight inspired was ineffable, beyond mere description for those not present to witness it. The man barked a cheerful greeting and sprinted to join the procession. There, a towering character who stood half a head taller greeted him with a heavy slap on the back, and yet his words were filled with respect. Do my eyes deceive me? Sir Miyazaki, I can't think that the return trip here from Inazuma City could have been easy on you. Miyazaki smiled like a young man, taking the first steps of their journey, expression relaxed. Why, Katsuragi, Inazuma is the realm of the almighty Shogun. I sailed upon the fastest ship, short upon the set of sea routes. What dangers could I possibly face? What is the good news? There were some, naturally. The two burst into a furious laughter, roughhousing with the other workers until the past end. A young man dressed in a linen shirt and wearing a headscarf gazed into the dancing flames of the furnace before him. Now the flames of the forge are unlikely any other, for their intensity affected the resulting integrity of both metal and blade. So too, then, was the flame watcher an unusual individual. At his fingertips sat a lizard, and on his face he wore a smile. The workshops were huge, and the furnace was deeper within. A reasonable person might have stood there, <laughs> might, have, might think that there should have been many working alongside the watcher, yet he stood alone. That's where I got stood from. Only when Katsuragagi Miyazaki strode into the room did the watcher turn. This watcher was Niwa, armory officer and administrator of Taratsuna, born to the Niwa clan, which served as one of the three pillars of the Ishin art. Niwa never argued with his siblings and was a worthy successor by all accounts. The post he received as a result of his high standing with those in power served as a statement upon itself. Miyazaki handed a well-bundled text to Niwa as he adjusted his expression and said, It is as you have said, sir. The elders of your clan in the city do not think highly of your plan. Yet I still believe it to be worth a try. As such, I have found the proper vendors and procured the materials that you requested. Niwa studied the text and nodded. We should try some of these new forging techniques. Where the Katahara says yea or nay. Katsuragi frowned, and with a sigh he said, Forging is a precise and difficult undertaking. You know this better than most, sirs, and still you seek improvement each day with terrifying drive. Ah, should my lord... Nagamasa hear this. The sourness in his face shall be hard to miss. Niwa smiled, replying, And how goes the forging of your lord's great blade? Katsuragi? Katsuragi neither wanted to shame his master nor lie to his two friends, yet he could not think of any way to deflect, and so groused. I see your ears are as keen as your hands, Sir Niwa. The jokes of us unlearned men are as nothing before you. Miyazaki hid his grin. Upon hearing this, Niwa released the lizard from his hand into Katsuragi's palm. But just as more words were to be exchanged, someone came by, came walking nearby. Their footsteps light up with celebrity, celerity of youth. The head of that peak dim was rounded, and the light of the fire looked like an oil jewel. The young man placed some boxed food at the side, and nodding, he prepared to leave. Katsuragi called out to them, What about your share? Aren't you going to eat it? The young man, upon hearing his words, found himself absolutely at a loss. After a while, he answered, Very well, I'll try it. You're welcome to the food. We all eat the same fare after all, Niwa said. The men nodded and left, seemingly deep in thought. Extract 2. The Kabuki Mono was by the coast. Sunset fell to the accompaniment of darkness. The bands of twilight showed themselves not. From their place, it's under clouds royal, grumbling the omens of the coming rainstorm. Darkness filled the flesh of the sea and the dust blade of the clouds, and kneel upon the land at supplication, mirroring the kabuki mono with knees bent and face pointed toward the waters. None passed that way, and none knew what he was waiting for in silence. Time passed, I measured and uncounted, till a black cloud suddenly tore free from the sky and began to circle the kabuki mono, bearing down on him like a nightmare. Though he was not aware of first, after a studying gaze was refined by time, he understood this cloud had marked him for the very start. It found a fishing boat drew near, the light of its bow flickering in and out of sight beneath falling sheets of rain. The mist unspooled across the area, stealing safe from the fishermen. Repeatedly, he exclaimed, It is but dusk. How are my eyes darkened? Is there anyone that can deliver my boat upon safe tides? Like a falling spear, the black cloud reached the bottom of the boat and was joined in its briefness of direction. Like a charging beast, they plunged into the shoreline, scant steps away. The Kabuki Mono stood idle, slanting his head to study the grand wreck. Not but half an hour was left of the one who had cried out for help, but with a plop it landed at the Kabuki Mono's feet. He crouched to better study the object, straining against the urge to take a bite out of it. Yet he did not. Well, that is a really weird story. 
where the dark clouds swirling down had already picked the remnants of the ship clean, the wee one stared at it blankly, like an awakened dreamer. When he returned to himself, the clouds had scattered, as if they had never been there at all. As for the ship, could it have been struck down by a storm? Who was to know, not the Kabuki Mono? Extract 3 Katsuragi rushed to the doorway and shouted, My lord, things go ill at the furnace. I have searched for Sir Niwa, but there is no trace of him. And much time has passed since Lord Miyazaki left to uh, seek aid, but he has yet to send us any missive. Look, Mikoshi Nagamasa turned slowly, his face grave as one attending a funeral. He spoke then, his words heavy laden. I wish not to say such words, Katsuragi, but Sir Miyazaki may never return. Katsuragi peered past Nagamasa's broad. No, <laughs> fucking broad. I think I, my brain said brood, like brood of insects or something. Nagarasi's broad shift shoulders beyond the windows, the clouds above boiled in waves of black, as if darkness now was the only weather, and might even morph into an abyssal beast into our Taratsuna hole. Over ten people had already perished, that was why. Why? Katsuragi recalled as it struck. Yes, it was coming back to him now, in dribs and drabs. That was why they had set the, the seek aid. Yazaki had been the first to set sail. The cloud had only just begun to form then. Traveling from Taratsuna to Inazuma to ask for support was normally no great feat, yet there had been no sign of his return. Then a second ship was sent, followed by a third and a fourth, till the Kabuki Mono himself had departed upon the tides. Under foul skies and ominous fortunes, it had been Katsuragi who had brought him back and treated him as his own, and it pained him greatly to see the lad go. Yet the situation in Taratsuna was severe. Even should they sacrifice more lives, it would have been worth it to gain assistance from Inazuma City. Niwa was gone, and none could find him. Afterwards, Nagamasa, Nagamasa led a search party into the mountains and area around the furnace. All to no avail, folk began to wonder if Niwa might have encountered an accident. But worry soon turned to suspicion, and they wondered if he had fled, unwilling to bear the sin of having caused these incidents. People grew ever more suspicious, and Nagamasa himself strained against his discontent and fury. His face had grown to resemble the rumbling clouds above. Suddenly a figure flashed by, the presence not go unnoticed by Nagamasa. He drew his blade and cut, though he only nicked the silk and veil the intruder wore. For a moment he swayed, and then, like a man pulled by strings, they moved behind Nagamasa, laughing darkly. Are you seeking someone, my lord? Niwa, perhaps? Nagamasa bellowed in fury. You dare address Sir Niwa directly? The figure parted like mist before his falling blade. Only oh, remember Charles Blanc reached, but not beyond sight. A ghastly apparition indeed. Was he used to my people? Nagamasa howled in terror, held back only by... Katsuragi's desperate grip. All his sense returned to him. He realized he was but an inch away from falling into the furnace. Hey, that was an adventure. And I've already read that part. Read the first. Oh, and please read my essay draft as well. Oh, joy. <sighs> oh, boy. Details this text belong to a series. Okay, a brief analysis of possible events of historical importance in the Taratsuna era. Er, er, oh my god, I can't talk today. Area. Of course, day I can't fucking talk is the day they give me all the reading. Details. This text belongs to a series of works sponsored by the Vahuma's Veilcutter Project. It has yet to be numbered. Abstract. The Taratsuna era has always been a major pillar of Inazuma smithing industry. Two incidents have occurred there, and details beyond the first are vague at best. I believe, however, these might be a hidden history beyond these events that transpired. People will attempt, hence, as people will attempt to analyze what may have unfolded from the available data. Glossary, Tarotune Era, Raiden Gokuden, Mikoshi Nagamasa, Kabuki Mono. Instructions, paper continues and expands the work of my mentor, Mr. Rumi, his report on the happily hidden tales of Taratsuna, and sends the further this avenue of research. According to the data, the blade forge techniques of Inazuma were originally handed down from the Electro Archon, also known as the Rad and Shogun. Using the arts they inherited from their Archon, the people of Inazuma devoted themselves to the process of forging. However, strange rumors that do not quite fit the steely nature of metalwork yet linger about Taratsuna, which was a central pillar in the forging industry. There, the Makoshi and the Niwa clan, along with an eccentric puppet, serve as the three windows of insight we need to investigate the truth beyond what happened. Hey, body. Strange notes from the Taratsuna area. Their contents are as follows. Perhaps I overstepped, but I think that Sir Nagamasa's mood grows better when he forges blades. The essence of heat. <laughs> oh my god, I can't talk today. The, the obsession. Where the fuck did I get the absence of heat? Yeah, I really can't fucking read today. <sighs> the obsession to cleanse a stain of the name Mikoshi must eat at him. 
Also, Sir Kat, uh, Katsuragi discovered a nameless eccentric while patrolling around Nazuchi Beach. The patrol brought a certain number of jade steel ingots. Sir Katsuragi discovered matters of smithing deep into the night with the voice armory officer. We at last made a single Nagamaki. We call it the Daitara Nagamasa. The inspector was in high spirits, and he and the vice armory officer, Nozumu, was so taken by the beauty of the Daitara Nagamasa, I drew a picture of it, and he performed a sword dance with that wandering eccentric. And we could not find that eccentric. The inspector flew into a rage and slashed Katsuragi. The great blade cut deep into the flesh, cast his own Nagamaki into the furnace's flame. Nozomu could not abide by that order and drew the completely melted weapon into the furnace. He was horribly burned. Nozomu died that night. I dare say that while Sir Katsuragi may have committed malfeasance, it was out of the goodness of his heart. Kinjo hid the Nagamaki in Nozomu's drawing in the arsenal. Nagamasa is harsh, but also knows right from wrong. But even so, he is not amenable to reason. His name indicates one obsessed with purity. Still... I and some vessels of Taratsuna have not been blinded by the matter of Nagamasa's mother Chiyo, and we trust him. I also remain unwilling to forget the joy of creating the Dayatara Nagamasa with him, and that joy of watching that nameless Sensei perform the sword dance with Katsuragi. Before we withdrew, we should have divided the arsenal key into three parts, one for the inspector, one for the armory officer, and one to be left in Taratsuna itself to prevent theft. We were in too much of a hurry. Neither the inspector nor the armory officer could be found, so I was so bold as to hide the three pieces of the Inazuma chest within treasure chest in Taratsuna. Seven notes mentioned prior have been scattered across the Taratsuna era, area. Among the seven notes, six seem to be of good physical integrity, though they all look quite old, while the last one looks more recent. I believe that the first six notes and the last are of different time periods, though the gulf in years between them needs to be verified. Kindness of the first six should also be related to each other, as the incidents mentioned are quite consistent with one another. Rumi once mentioned in the happily hidden tales of Taratsuna, who by known as hidden tales, that in the past, the researchers from Sumeru had investigated cultural histories of Taratsuna and Inazuma. Though the place had fallen to some degree of disappear since the hidden tales were written, they have improved since the time when I wrote my original article. Regardless, what used to be an area of major industry remains a place most inhospitable, and residents of Taratuna may be found living and dwelling in the waters. The residents, when questions, told the researchers that Taratuna's golden age, centuries ago, when it was ministered by Armory Officer Niwa, Vice Armory Officer Miyazaki, and Inspector Makoshi Nagamasa, yet the elders among the locals with deeper ties to the region also seemed to stress the fact that there were strange rumors surrounding their homeland's past. A great many of these rumors revolved around the yokai, whom are so very characteristic of Inazuma's folk histories. A very small number, however, mentioned the word puppet. It should be known that puppets are neither traditional nor common yokai in Inazuma. This fact drew the intention of the researchers to delve further, and eventually, the following pieces of information came to light. A puppet did once appear in Taratsuna. Its visage was elegant, its apparel impeccable, and the way it dressed hit all the joint lines on its body. If no one were to mention that it was indeed a puppet, it would be hard to tell. Additionally, this puppet seemed to possess special joint lines that would fade with time, eventually even disappearing altogether, which would perhaps eventually make the puppet seem entirely human. The name of the puppet was known to almost none. Some folk claim to have spotted it appearing around Taratuna, while others mentioned co encountering it in the central regions of the area. Some even claim that it would frequent the beach, tail spread of it standing beside the sea and gazing across the waters toward Inazuma City. While it was that puppet that was gazing, it remains a mystery. As mentioned earlier, the six notes all document a certain nameless eccentric. The eccentric, which can be read as Kabuki Mono, is usually used in Inazuma for the figure who dresses or behaves in a peculiar manner. It is understandable, therefore, why this character would have left such an impression. Should people of Tarasuna indeed have a puppet in their midst, incurring mass panic? A good possibility, considering the coexistence between yokai and humans in Inazuma at large, then this puppet would have been likely become a local resident. What is thus known as if the Kabuki Mono was just another title for this puppet? Perhaps because it was uniquely dressed to extract attention from its more special characteristics. Workable theory, but one that still lacks enough evidence to support it. Still, it can be retained as an anecdotal lens of source. This individual is related to Taratsuna and been compiled here. Based on historical documents from Inazuma, starting from the administrators, the records are as follows. Army Officer Niwa, full name Niwa Hisha Hisahit 
was the inheritor of the Ishinart, ancestor to the Niwa clan. His family, along with the name and character clans, Akame and Kadehara clans, were together known as the Ishin Sensaku. Records show that Niwa was a modest, intelligent individual who displayed remarkable talent in the administration of territory and people. His eventual whereabouts are unknown, but he was suspected to have left Taratuna with his family following the incident. Way summary officer Miyazaki, full name Miyazaki Kaneo. He was Niwa's second in command. His origins are unknown, and he primarily assisted Niwa in forging and personal management. He was of, of affable temperament and had many friends in the region, including one Mikoshi Nagamasa, Inspector Mikoshi Nagamasa, the successor of the Mikoshi clan, adopted son to Oni warrior Mikoshi Chio, and the younger adopted brother to Mikoshi Michihiro, also known as I- Iwakura, the successor, with his mother missing and abandoned by his brother. Nagamasa alone bore the family name, striving daily to wipe the shame from their history. <sighs> the records state that Mikosi Nagamasa was a stubborn figure. He was also known to be a person of moral virtue and integrity. It had been noted in various records that he practiced forging swords for self-cultivation and specifically requested special instruction from Miyazaki to further his capabilities. However, after the famous blade, Daitara Nagamasa was forged. He used it to slay his subordinate. Katsuragi, for reasons unknown at present. Subordinate Katsuragi. Katsuragi's full name and background remain unknown, despite all the materials I have sorted through. I have yet to find any more, any more additional personal information regarding him. Then Mikoshi Nagamasa's subordinate, he was a loyal warrior who would have been saved by Nagamasa in his youth. Then I swore to stick by his lords of thick and thin to give his living service if it was all but asked of him. Kabuki Mona, full name unknown, background unknown, from the many sources I've compiled, but combined with Rumi's personal observations, this character might have been the puppet mentioned in the rumors. Kabuki Mona was a figure of fashionable grace and gentleness. According to the hidden tales, he was brought back to Taratuna by Katsuragi, became a member of the community. When the Kabuki Mona first arrived in Taratuna, he knew nothing of cleaning, cooking, or any of meticulous nature. The girls taught him their skills over time, showing him how to clean his attire, dance, and craft small trinkets. Records state that the Kabuki Mona was there when the Daitara Nagamasa was forged, though his trail ends before Makoshi Nagamasa slew Katsuragi. I believe this is that the Kabuki Mona was indeed the aforementioned puppet, that he quickly had a hand in Katsuragi's death. The rest paper remains unfinished. One thing is for sure, though, a lot of thought was put into it. Yeah, I'd fucking say, holy shit. This was like fucking Arianaka all over again with the fucking reading. Sawada was encouraging me to follow his more creative approach, but I think essays should be grounded in facts. I don't think explaining everything away with mysterious forces will cut it. Oh, how about if I plug the holes in Sawada's narrative with political intrigue? Like, um, I could put a turf war between rival factions at the center of the whole series of events. Wait, you're allowed to just make stuff up? You've gone from essay to guessay there. Akaba, look. Your teacher has researched this extensively. I've reached out to everyone I could think of. Whatever information we have now is all that there is to know. This is as much detail as you're ever going to get. Besides, if there really was a political power struggle going on at anything like the level you seem to be suggesting, what hope would we ever have of finding out the truth? Ah, uh, good point. Okay, back to the drawing board, I guess. Uh, give me some time. I, I need to find a new angle on this. We have some other stuff to do, so we'll have to say goodbye for now. Good luck with your essay! Alright, thank you. If you find out any more info about all this, please do let me know. Thanks so much. about it has to do with the balladeer doesn't it okay then even if we did know something about it we probably couldn't share it with them huh after all we kicked his butt and got him locked up information about people like that is usually super confidential isn't it if you ask paimon akaba should just pick a different topic there must be as many essay topics as there are trees in the forest there's no point in What the fuck is she doing? Huh. Well, that's... That's always something to react to. Hey! Did you see that? He literally just went by! Over there! It looked like... Like... The Balladeer! No, it can't... 
can't have been. He got locked up. Oh, quick, let's catch up and see. The guards probably let him go because how annoying he was. Seriously, I, I like his gameplay. He's a lot of fun, but holy fuck is he annoying. To be honest, I think the voice actor did a good job because that's how he's supposed to be. Like, I don't blame the voice actor for it at all. It's just how he's supposed to be. I think the voice actor did a good job of portraying the character. <laughs> but he's so fucking annoying. Investigation in Ermin Soul for me. A deal? <laughs> you sure you trust this guy? What did you expect? Why do you think Sumero would keep me around otherwise? Or maybe killing me is all you can think about. It sure would be satisfying. But if that's the case, why haven't you done it already? Don't flatter yourself. It was. Nahida said there's still some mysteries in you to figure out. Ah, so if it were up to you, you'd finish the job? Guess I had you all wrong. There I was thinking you were just getting cold feet. To be honest, he is one of the satisfying bosses to beat up. Mm, well, that escalated quickly. Not a good start. Could I ask you all to please calm down? But Paimon's worried about you, Nahida. Don't let him trick you. <laughs> It's not every day you see people questioning the God of Wisdom's judgment. Just when you think you've seen it all. Don't you dare try to drive a wedge between us! As long as the terms are reasonable, I don't think there's a problem in making a deal. Even with the Balladeer. Well, I for one have no reason to doubt you. Considering you even struck a deal with a doctor. Yes, one in which I gained valuable information. You'll come to understand more about that in the fullness of time. And you're all the same, aren't you, all you Archons? The Paladir's power was all but completely spent after your battle. He's no longer strong enough to be a strategic threat to us. That puts him in quite a precarious position. Plus, he's a former Harbinger with knowledge of many of the Fatui's sensitive secrets. Being stuck here in Sumeru could make him a sitting duck, depending on how the Fatui plan to respond. Wait a second. Farmer? You mean, he's not a harbinger anymore? I take no pleasure in saying this, but it seems as if the doctor had no intention of welcoming back a loser, so... I mean, I would take pleasure in saying that. Sometimes it's you using them. Other times, it's them using you. Most human relationships are this way. Certainly all the stable ones are. That's how it was between me and the Fatui. And also between each of the Harbingers. So as long as you have some value to offer, nobody will ever abandon you. But after recent events, even I have to admit that I'm not worth quite what I used to be. <laughs> well, if the Fatui are going to reevaluate my utility, I need to have a backup plan for myself. As we discussed, I don't like causing harm to living beings. And you said you need protection. So, why not join forces with us? Wait, but the Balladeer isn't alive, isn't he? He's a puppet. He's a robot, basically. He has a consciousness, I guess, but he's not biological. I think these two have made their objection to that idea fairly clear. Don't you? And they're your friends. So I guess you'll be siding with them. Yeah, obviously! Nahira, don't listen to him! Then let's put that discussion to the side for now. We still have time. Today can be a trial run. Where we go from here will depend on how well we manage to cooperate today. Alright. Then I'll do what we agreed. 
Good. Go now and keep in touch. Nahida, are you... Uh, are you serious about this? Yes. I have my reasons for this decision. In fact, I'm largely doing it for your benefit. If you want to do something to benefit me, let me beat him up again. <laughs> yes. As I told you once before, there's information about your twin in Ermin's soul. I don't oh, care about yeah. that. Actually, that's the whole reason we came to see you today. So, you have an update on that? Mm-hmm. You may remember me mentioning that the Fatui had not included your twin's details in the Descender category. This is an extremely important point. It's possible that the Fatui have other information that even I don't know about. And since the Balladeer used to be one of them, he'll be better acquainted with this information than I am. He was granted the power to connect with Ermensoul when he almost became the god of a new era. Even though he no longer has the Gnosis, some traces of its power remain in him. He can still connect. The amount of information in Ermensoul is vast beyond description. Sifting through all of it without knowing what to look for would take too long, even for me. So I asked the Balladeer to search in Ermensoul for any information about the Descenders. He's more familiar with this kind of information, and should be able to find it more quickly. Exactly! Or... what if... You... Paimon just doesn't trust him! He's treated us as enemies every time we've run into him! I understand. But sometimes, everything is dictated by which side you're on. How things will go in the future depends on what information he brings back. And Traveler? I know what your heart desires most of all. That's where you're wrong. Ah, oh, fuck. What the fuck is wrong with my OBS? I just dropped a lot of fucking frames there. Hope the stream ended up okay. Our minds have connected several times before. There is a corner of your heart reserved for an intense longing. A feeling of being all alone in the dark. Searching for the one candle whose light still burns. As Sumeru's deity, it is my responsibility to be on guard against the Balladeer. But as someone who counts you as a friend, I want to do something for you. If this deal with the Balladeer can give you the answers you've been longing to find, then it's worth it. It's my pleasure, really. You're Sumeru's hero. You've more than earned it. Hmm. I'm still worried about this idea. Is there anything we can do to help? I was going to contact you about that, but then you suddenly showed up on your own accord. It seems like we have a telepathic connection. In fact, I was going to ask you to supervise the Balladeer on my behalf while he carries out the task I assigned. Even though he only has a fraction of his full power left, that's still a fraction of a former Harbinger. If you could accompany him, it would put my mind at ease. Of course, I'll be there to help guide you through Ermensoul from the outside. Great, thank you. Prepare yourselves. I'm going to transport you into Ermensoul. Joy. Wow, it looks pretty different here compared to last time. The colors are gentler. I guess that must be because Sumeru's at peace now. Look at that. Hot on my heels. You know, you didn't have to cut your catch up short just to keep me company. Oh, but I guess you panicked when you realized that I might enter Ermin's soul ahead of you. Shut your beak, Jailbird! No way a prisoner gets to be so smug! I understand that prisoners have to put up with harassment from the guards, but right now, I'm on temporary release. So maybe you should think about backing off a little. Sounds like a successful rendezvous. I need to be quite clear about something. In a few moments, you'll be entering into the innermost region of Ermensoul. It is an environment like no other, and the most important place in all of Sumeru. Unlike anywhere else, Ermensoul's inner region consists exclusively of torrents of information. 
You must put aside your differences and be extremely careful as you navigate your way through. I know there are many grievances between you on both sides, but it is essential that you remain calm after entry. This is as much for your own safety as anything else. Fine. Let's call it truce. But only until this mission's over. Let's cut each other a little slack, shall we? We are gonna be traveling together after all. Per my agreement with Lesser Lord Kusanali, I'll be at the front. It's my job to lead the way and get rid of any obstacles in our path. All you have to do is keep your pretty eyes open and try not to fall behind. <laughs> you sure are confident. Paimon will give you that. You make it sound like you're even more experienced at adventuring than us. Lee is hundreds of years if old. If there are no further objections, I suggest we get going. I suppose Traveler is too. Need some time to mentally prepare yourselves. Man, what the fuck is with my OBS today? Just had the fuck up on me while I was doing this too. <laughs> we can start now. Ermansol access grid. Initiating connection procedure. Is this a small sapling? I don't have wired internet. Oh, darn it! Connected to Come the on, let's catch up with him. computer right now. So I don't know if that's the cause, but this is a recent issue, and I never had this before. My Wi-Fi is really fucking good. Wow. So this is the inside of Ermansoul. Well, this is a recent issue, but it has been happening more than just now. So I don't know, I might need to switch the wired. Ooh. Paimon's never seen anything like this. And it feels like a sacred place. Ermin's soul is closely intertwined with the entirety of Tavat. Every bit of information flowing here means something. Pick your jaws up off the floor. It's time to go. Why is it that Paimon just wants to do the opposite of everything he says? <sighs> Lesser Lord Kusanali, we will now proceed to the heart of Ermin's soul. Can you still sense where the heart of Ermin's soul is? Yes. Permission to begin searching for information there? Permission granted. Go ahead. Let's go. Stay close. Don't go running off. Hey, so... Say we did go running off in here. What would happen? <laughs> what, what are you smirking at? I was just imagining the look on your travel companion's face if you went and got lost. Anything's possible in here. You can't rule anything out. So if you want to stay safe, your best option is to stick close to me. These sapling things have spread out. Those are all packets of information from inside Ermansol. Be careful not to touch them. There's a time and a place to lie, but this definitely isn't it. So why don't you relax your guard a little? We're here. What a huge tree! Lesser Lord Kusanali. Good, you made it. Are you ready? Ready when you are. Then please begin. <clears throat> Preparing to access cognitive currents. Establishing waypoint. The Balladeer's actually doing what Nahida tells him. 
guess he must want to stay alive. Why are you whispering? We're close enough that he can hear you. The rest is up to you. If you discover anything at all, make sure to share it with us. Will do. Huh. For once, we're the ones with nothing to do. Traveler, Paimon, would you like to talk? <laughs> yes, I've also invited Paimon to join. I? What the? We can talk to each other inside our heads? <laughs> That's part of it. Plus, we're all friends. There's nothing wrong with us talking like this once in a while. Paimon's never tried this before. This is great! So, Paimon's been wanting to ask you something. Don't you think the Balladeer's a bit of a walking contradiction? He's always talking back, but he seems to listen to what you say. As I've told you before, there are still some mysteries for him to resolve. Things that are clear as day to me, but that he has yet to understand. Perhaps today will be the day that he finds some answers. Well done. Smart and attentive as always. So, you made contact with that part of his mind. Well, it's true. Betrayal turned the Paladir into the person he is today. Huh. Paimon thought nothing could get under that guy's skin. Turns out, he can get hurt and angry just like anyone else. Everyone has a history, Paimon. Even if you're a puppet created by the Electro Archon. Speaking of puppets, we ran into two people at the Academia today talking about an essay. Turns out their topic was about the Tatarasuna incident. Nahida, do you know anything about that? If you mean the mysterious events, the Kabuki Mono and so on, yes. I know about all of that. Really? Because from what they were saying, it sounded like lots of Tatarasuna's history is still unexplained. And most of the information we have now is just from people filling the gaps with their imagination. At least that's what they thought. Oh? How interesting. Those two managed to deduce quite a lot through guesswork alone. So the guessé got it right? Well, they guessed right about one thing. Tatarasuna was sabotaged. Must be a riveting conversation you three are having. Funny how all the good ones happen when I'm not involved. Uh, what makes you think we're talking to each other? <laughs> Don't insult me. You're having a private conversation without me. Obviously, I must be the topic of said conversation. I mean, that's not really obvious. You could be talking literally anything. <laughs> but okay. Of course you do. You can't have your prisoner knowing too much. So, uh, have you found anything yet? Still looking. Don't get your hopes up, though. You and your twin come from outside this world. It wouldn't surprise me if there was nothing on either of you in Ermansoul at all. Hey, how did you know about that? Didn't Ahita tell you? It's not like we've never met before. And anyway, you're world famous. It'd be more surprising if I didn't know a few things about you. Right now, we have to keep the peace. I'm not interested in creating more misery for myself. And making cordial conversation is something I can manage. Huh? Wait. This light, it looks similar to those saplings. What could it be? Anonymous data. Don't you forget the agreement! You have to share it with us! Shh! 
Just wait. Mr. Niwa, are you certain this is worth the risk? We are talking about Tatara Suna's furnace, after all. It may not pay to act rashly. There's no one else who can enter the furnace. It has to be me. Is that so? Well, since you insist. <sighs> it's... I have been in Tatara Suna for some time now. You have shown me great hospitality, as has Mikoshi Nagamasa, and indeed, everyone else. Under your leadership, Tatara Suna is a warm, welcoming place, like a giant village. People are gainfully employed, their lives have purpose, they are motivated. As I understand, the Raiden Shogun has, in recent years, eliminated much of the evil that plagued Inazuma. As for Tatara Suna, it was originally established as a means of safely disposing Crystal Marrow. The forging industry with Crystal Marrow as a raw material has since flourished, giving rise to generations of swordsmiths. Some world-renowned, others unknown. All passing on their legacy. Skills, blood, dreams. Every smith brought into this trade looks to find their purpose between steel and blade. That is why you accepted the proposal brought to you by myself and Akame. Yes, well, were it not for you coming to Inazuma and happening to make Akame's acquaintance, the two of you never would have joined forces. And he would be the first to admit that there's no way he could have revolutionized our forging process like this on his own. At least not on the same timescale. You allowed Akame to take all the credit for a method that you jointly developed. He sold it to me. And now, every piece of ore here is smelted using the new technique. Even now, you remain one of Tatara Suna's key consultants, working right here alongside us. I believe it is you, sir, who are truly responsible for the changes in our manufacturing and forging methods. <laughs> you flatter me. From the outset, I saw much that was commendable in the forging industry of Inazuma. And it has been my great honor to befriend you all. So you say, Escher. But is this really the truth? My good sir, what do you mean? I tried to resist thinking it was all connected. Because I didn't want to speculate. And I didn't want to believe that things could turn out this way. What have we gained from adopting your new technology? Ominous black smoke? Mounting production problems? Worker fatigue and casualties are up and continuing to rise at an alarming rate. And recently, as you well know, someone died because of that strange filth inside the furnace. We've kept the truth from spreading outside, but still, I suspect you understand it better than I do. They're using the crystal marrow. It's part of that uh, dead god Orobashi. So that's what's going on, I suppose. None of the people who went out to get help have come back. Now, our mutual friend, the Kabuki Mono, is taking the Golden Feather to Narukami Island to seek an audience with the Shogun. This is our last hope. But that doesn't phase you, does it, Escher? Nothing does. Otherwise, why would you still be standing there with that smile on your face? <laughs> I'm just surprised that you finally chose to be so sincere. I'm sure you've been harboring these suspicions for quite some time. <sighs> Mikoshi Nagamasa may have noticed that there was one common denominator among all these events. Namely you, Escher. But Mr. Mikoshi is more cautious than I. He does things by the book. After all, Nagamasa is the adopted son of Mikoshi Torichio, the yokai struck down by the Shogun's own hand. If he truly seeks to redeem his family's honor, an abundance of caution is well advised. <laughs> You're well informed on the subtleties of his situation for a mechanic all the way from Fontaine. Are you sure you're not a little overqualified? 
Why, Mr. Niwa, are you suggesting I find a job as a diplomat? Sadly, I am so very attached to my craft. Enough, Escher. I'm here because an evil force is raging inside the furnace. And someone needs to take your new device inside the high-risk zone so we can absorb it and put an end to the problem. I'm in charge here. And I'm about to take some responsibility and head inside. Probably to my death. But what about you? What are you still doing here? Judging from the look in your eyes, you don't seem to trust me. Drop the act! We're past that now. Whoever you are, it looks like your plan to destroy Tatara Suna has worked. I just want to know what you're still doing here. What's left? Don't you have all your answers by now? Honestly, I'm just waiting for the right moment. A moment like this, where you finish talking and I stop you from entering the furnace. You... You... <sighs> You're a little smarter than I initially gave you credit for. I thought I'd disguise myself exceptionally well, at least for the first few days. But to my surprise, you had your people look into my background right from the start. It's a long journey from Inazuma to Fontaine, but that didn't stop them. Eventually, they managed to confirm that Escher was an alias, and that I was not from Fontaine at all. And yet, despite all of that, you still fail to realize my true identity, and what I seek in Tatara Suna. Did you really think you would be able to see through my plan? <clears throat> if you kill me, there's no one who can get inside the furnace. So you're really going to destroy this place? Is that it? Oh, but you're quite wrong. There is one other person. Um, some may not see him as a person, but you told him yourself. You're not a puppet. You're a human. You're just missing a heart. <gasps> Whoever you're working for won't get away with this. They'll be found out. But... This makes no sense. What are you really trying to accomplish by all this? Why go to all this trouble? It's no trouble at all. Patience is a virtue which I have in abundance. This is all part of a carefully controlled experiment. If you must know, I'm happy to divulge my true identity. I'm a Fatui Harbinger. Call me... The Doctor. The... Fatui? Who... What do you want? Just to create a minor inconvenience for your nation. That's it? That's why you gave us your cursed technology? Just to let loose the evil energy from the crystal marrow? <laughs> Look how even the righteous soul is filled with venom when faced with its demise. My device functions precisely as you say. It is the only chance you have of preventing a catastrophe and keeping the truth from the outside world. However, I did not make it with you in mind. It is easier for a person to be possessed by evil spirits when they are filled with hate. So give in to your fury. I want to see what happens when a malevolent heart is placed into an unsuspecting puppet. Make no mistake, even without you, that pure, innocent puppet would only end up being used by someone else instead. What other reason would a human have for befriending one who is not of our kind? <gasps> If you give him my heart, tell him that both Nagamasa and I see him as one of us. 
He has nothing to prove to anyone. Because not everyone just wants to use other people. The only ones who think like that are people like you. What a beautiful way to see the world. It almost makes me feel a little guilty. Hmm. Then out of respect for you, I shall redefine myself. Think of me as a monster or a demon, if you wish. At least this way your death is not a consequence of your own folly turning you into an easy target. You simply lost to something more powerful than you could ever hope to defeat. I say, Mr. Niwa, let's see what happens. Will your puppet friend become a human? No, that will prove quite impossible. Mr. Niwa? Already dead. What a pity. <sighs> Jester, I have completed the task you gave me. Creating a gap and infiltrating Inazuma's inner workings. <laughs> what fun it was. I'd like to introduce a puppet to you. If he proves useful, let's make him our newest comrade. And if not, let's turn him to dust. Are you all right? Dottore. <laughs> Dottore! <laughs> Good. Good. Was that... the doctor? Did he... Turn into a mechanic from Fontaine? He muted the mic for that. Just wanted to watch it. But yeah, that was pretty fucking intense. And Skyra seems to be losing it. <clears throat> yeah, man, this uh, quest has been a lot of uh, dialogue. At least this time I don't have to read it. <laughs> the doctor to confirm whether he'd eliminated all his segments I read this memory in his mind you have to admit it must be the truth maybe so but it means nothing does it but this memory shows that Niwa didn't betray you he never meant for you to be the one to take the device into the furnace you know very well what that means even more so than I he wasn't betrayed <sighs> Give him some space. He looks really mad. Paimon doesn't want to be anywhere near him right now. We need to give him some time to process his emotions. Paimon's still confused about the Tatarasuna incident. So, the doctor was behind it, but why has that gotten him so worked up? Nobody has ever deceived you like that, Paimon. It's natural that you find it difficult to understand. Perhaps he needed to learn this someday. So now you have the complete picture. Katsuragi took the Kabuki Mono to live with the people of Tatarasuna. Later, the doctor showed up disguised as a mechanic from Fontaine. And that's when the trouble began. It was all a horrific experiment planned by the doctor. Everything he did was just to plant seeds of disaster in Inazuma that would bear fruit in the future. Of all the unwitting participants in the doctor's experiment, the balladeer became the main test subject. After the events you just saw in that memory, the doctor put Niwa's heart into the device and handed it to the balladeer. Then 
He instructed him to enter the furnace and absorb all the filth caused by the smelting process. The load was far beyond what he expected, but the Balladeer survived. He left the furnace in sheer exhaustion and said to the mechanic, This device seems to have protected me. What's in it? The mechanic answered, Neela fled this place for fear of punishment, but he left you a gift. He said it's the one thing that you've been looking for. He took it straight from the chest of one of his innocent servants. The mechanic removed the withered heart from the device as he spoke. The balladeer was stunned that such unthinkable cruelty had brought him the thing he'd been longing for his entire life. A heart acquired through cold-blooded murder is a cursed thing, but it has protected him from the filth. He thought Miwa had completely betrayed him, and yet this very betrayal had ensured his survival. Overwhelmed with anger and sorrow, the balladeer threw the heart to the ground and left Tatarasuna without looking back. Holy moly! So the doctor killed an innocent man and pinned everything on the victim? That's terrible! Yes. Only if he understands this can he choose a new path forward. Dator, you brazen face! <clears throat> Niwa didn't run from justice. You killed him! Are you worried about me? If we didn't have such a history, I'd almost think that qualifies me to be your friend. It won't. I'll keep my end of the deal. Hmm. Hey, are you investigating the stuff we want to know about? That's why we're here. But unfortunately, there's no information about the Descenders in Ermansoul. Even if you can't find anything, that seems to confirm it. Ermansoul does not keep records on the Descenders. Anyone who comes from beyond this world is not counted as part of Tavat. Oh, does that mean we have to leave empty-handed? Don't thank me just yet. Hmm, you look really upset. <laughs> Well, since Ermansoul was a dead end, I guess I can share some other info that might interest you. Huh? About what? The reason why there are records about your brother in Ermansoul. It might have something to do with Conria. Apparently, Conria was his first destination when he arrived in this world. Plus, he only came to this world because the heavens responded to the summoning. The heavens responded? The Jester told me this himself. You can take his word on this. He was a royal mage in Conria, and lived with your brother for a time. I don't know the details. It's up to you whether you want to believe me. All I can say is, I wouldn't lie to you about this. Did you get all that, Lesser Lord Kusanali? Yes. Astonishing news. Does this info count towards my mission? It wasn't from Ermansoul. But was it valuable? Very valuable. Good. In that case, I'll take some time for myself now. Huh? What have you done? Lesser Lord Kusanali was right. My power's all but completely spent. Even if I use all of the divine power left in me, I can't sustain this shield for very long. I shared a secret with you, and now you owe me. So in return, I'd like you to answer a question for me. Give me your hand. K. 
Can you hear my voice inside your head? No, I can't do anything like that anymore. At most, all I can do is exchange a few words with you. Poor Paimon. So tell me, in this world, is it possible to change the past? Done. Huh? What the? What happened? I not only saw you hold hands for a second. Nothing. I was just thanking her for helping me. So long. I suggest you get yourselves out of here quickly. Where are you going? Hey, wait up! Didn't you say not to go running off? So he got his answer even if I didn't, because he was able to, uh... What is it, uh, interpret my, uh, not immediate no. Fast reaction time, but I don't think we'll be seeing each other again. I'm sure you'll find a way. From this day forth, the names Balladeer and Kabuki Mono will cease to exist. Those who died in Tatarasuna because of me deserve another chance at life. You know, I never did like insects. Hordes of the puny things swarming together can be a real nuisance. And I enjoy nothing more than to stamp them out like the pests they are. But if a colony of harmless ants isn't threatening anyone, I guess they deserve to be left alone. Luckily, everything can be set right. It's time to solve this once and for all. Oh, he disappeared. Come on, we gotta find him somehow. Oh no, he's really <laughs> gone. Oh, can you hear me? Nahida! Traveler, Paimon, Paladir. What happened just now? I was suddenly cut off by some kind of power. It was the Balladeer's fault. He... he shut you out! I didn't think he'd be capable of something like that with so little power left. Did he keep some of his power hidden when he was defeated? Or... Did he achieve something beyond his abilities? And it took everything he had. Where the heck did he go? Oh, it's all our fault. We were supposed to keep an eye on him. Sorry, Nahida. Don't be. It's not your fault. Please, let me handle this from here. Even though I'm not sure I can solve it. We're running out of time. Follow my lead and get out of Ermansoul as soon as possible. This is an emergency. I'll have to ask you to stay here for now. Everything's arranged, and nobody will disturb you. Oh my god, more uh, fucking OBS freakouts. What the fuck is going on? I'm sorry, but this isn't something I need your help with. Leave this one to me. An emergency? How bad is it? Nahida, will you be okay? Don't worry. If my assessment is correct, though there may be some minor disturbances, it won't lead to a disaster. Please rest and recover your strength here until I say it's safe. Her voice is gone.
The dog is once again being difficult. So it's not just OBS today, apparently. Paimon can't shake the feeling that something really big has happened. What do you think the Balladeer meant? And why did he suddenly grab onto you before? Ooh, we're lying by a mission to Paimon. He wants to change the past? But surely that's impossible! Right! You can't just rewrite history! All that stuff happened already in real life! It's like, um... Imagine Paimon drank all the water in this inn. Even if no one was there to see it, Paimon would sure as heck remember drinking it! A great example. <laughs> about this. Paimon can't help but feel scared about what he might do. Ooh. Paimon's so confused. Huh? Ah! Sorry. Paimon accidentally... Oh. It's the Balladeer's fault for causing Paimon all this mental stress. But erasing yourself from history? It's unthinkable. Is that Really possible in Ermansoul? Not necessarily, but maybe. <laughs> uh oh. Paimon's head is overheating from trying to understand what he's up to. And it's still not working. Paimon's had it with that little brat. He's been nothing but trouble ever since we met him. There's no way he'll actually succeed, right? Otherwise, won't everyone who's connected to him be affected too? we can do about it at this point. Hey, have you got any ideas on what we should do next? Seems like now there's nothing left for us to do but to go to sleep. But Paimon's still so worried. Paimon won't be able to sleep a wink tonight. So, how about, uh, we list all our favorite foods to take our mind off things? Heck, if that doesn't work, Paimon's probably gonna collapse of anxiety here. All right, Paimon will start. First dish. Hmm. Munstack grilled fish. Oh, and chicken mushroom skewers. Tea break pancakes, cream stew, sauteed matsutake, and drain chili chicken, almond tofu, satisfying salad. Oh, oh, also, Adeptus Temptation, Golden Shrimp Balls, Triple Layered Consomme, Lotus Seed and Bird Egg Soup, and... And... Um... Um... Hmm? Uh, hmm. Uh... What do we... What was Paimon supposed to be doing just now? Paimon was... um... talking? Huh. Paimon suddenly can't remember what she was talking about. What was it again? Hmm? The Balladeer? Is that a food too? Huh. Weird name though. Yep, she's forgotten. Shocked face. Wow. What's wrong? Your eyes are like saucers. Was it something Paimon said? So, the Balladeer, is that someone's name? Cause it sounds like a nickname or something. Hmm? Okay, sure! Where are we going? Huh? Fine by Paimon, but is everything okay? You're acting like this is an emergency. Hmm. 
Well. It's been a while. Of course. Go ahead. No. Oh. <laughs> now there's a question I wasn't expecting. <sighs> Very well. I'll tell you what I know once more. The once renowned Raiden Gokuden, comprised of five branches Aminoma, Futsu, Ishin, Hyakume, and Senju. The art of forging practiced by these five clans was first taught to them personally by the almighty Shogun. Over time, the five branches diverged from one another as generations of bladesmiths honed and perfected their craft until they became five distinct traditions. Most of the great swordsmith clans of old have since fallen into decline. And for a long time, only the Amenoma branch kept its heart alive. But fortunately, Kaede Harakazuha recently returned to Inazuma and took up the mantle of the Ishin art. Now, two clans remain of the original Gokuden Five. Is that much, but it's better than one. If my memory serves me right. You yourself were present when he forged the Ishin blade. Oh, yeah, we were. Paima remembers that now. We learned a bit about the decline of the Raiden Gokuden then, too. It seems like such a shame. <sighs> that, my friends, is a tragic tale indeed. In fact, this was not made known to me for most of my life. All these years, I knew of those great clan's demise, but never the cause. <sighs> Only recently, when the question was on my mind, did I ask Kaedehara Kazuha about this? He told me that, as we are both heirs to a branch of the Raiden Gokuden, it was right that I should know the truth. There is no harm in telling you, but I must warn you. It is a dark and sorrowful tale. The Raiden Gokuden were the targets of a murderous rampage by a vengeful bladesmith. Vengeful? Why? Four hundred years ago, so I'm told, there was a catastrophic malfunction in Tatarasuna's furnace. One brave swordsmith heard the commotion and chose not to flee, but he rushed to the scene, hoping to prevent a disaster. Tatarasuna was home to a state-of-the-art forging and smelting operation in that day. And overseeing it was the armory officer. His surname was Niwa, though he had family ties to the Kaedehara clan. Knowing that they had just one chance to save countless lives, Mr. Niwa and the swordsmith leaped together into the furnace. The furnace quickly stabilized, but neither of them made it out. The smith's death, though heroic, dealt a devastating blow to his family's fortunes. His orphan son was left to fend for himself and grew up deeply resentful at the world. In his heart, the whole of Inazuma was culpable in his tragedy. He hated the almighty Shogun for her apparent indifference towards his father's death, and he hated everyone who had done nothing to try and save him. Powerless and destitute, the only legacy he had to pass on to his children was his hatred. Generation after generation bore this grudge, living in utter misery. Alas, if only the story could have ended there. But 100 years ago, the then head of this family reached the end of his wits. He could bear their fate no longer, and yet he could do nothing to change it. Finally, he made a drastic decision to take revenge on the Raiden Gokuden. In doing so, he sought to vent his pent-up anger 
and shake the very foundations of Inazuma's forging industry. In his fury, he murdered indiscriminately, killing even bladesmiths from the Hyakume clan which he belonged to. His goal was absolute, the devastation of all of the Raiden Gokuden. But when he came to the Kaedehara and Kamisato clans, his killing spree came to an abrupt end. He failed to catch them unawares. They fought back, fiercely, and they did not spare his life. That is why the Kaedehara clan and their Ishin art survived that day. I suppose they were the lucky ones, under the dire circumstances. Hmm. Was there anything else you wanted to ask? Kazuha? Why, yes. Just yesterday, in fact. We spoke for a while over some tea. He seemed well. Genshin at this point seems a lot of mindfuck quests, don't they? Quite a few of those since uh, Sumeru. Like you had the uh, Samasara one. The uh, fight with the Balladeer as well was uh, like had the what is the repeating and like looping and then Nahida gave you all the knowledge from it. My pleasure. Don't tell Paimon. There are other places you want to visit too, right? <laughs> Your expression says it all. You can't hide anything from Paimon. I'm hiding quite a few things. Let's check uh, something though. So this is still the second part. Man, this is fucking long. I forgot how long Archon quests were. Used to the story quest taking half an hour. Not half an hour, an hour and a half, I mean. What is it? It wouldn't be such a big deal, not for the fact that I'm completely and utterly fucking tired. <laughs> My sleep schedule is fucked. We're here! Um, this is the Yashiro Commission's headquarters, so... Traveler! It's been a while. If you're looking for the Commissioner and Miss Kamisato, I'm afraid your timing is unfortunate. They're not here right now. Are they out on business? The Commissioner is out on business, and Miss Kamisato is standing in for some meetings in the Commissioner's place. If it's urgent, you're welcome to wait inside until they get back. What do you think? Shall we go in? If it were anyone else, I couldn't allow it. But seeing as you're so close with the Commissioner and Miss Kamisato, I think it should be okay. We'll be heading in then. Hmm? Hello, dears. Is there something you want to say? <laughs> of course, Traveler. Yes, I know who you are. Miss Kamisato has told me about you. What would you like to know? Oh, they're both very well indeed. Lately, Miss Kamisato has been rather busy attending all kinds of meetings and occasionally paying visits to some local organizations on the Commissioner's behalf. As for the Commissioner himself, well, you know, busy as ever, that much hasn't changed. 
Although, he does seem to be in a rather good mood these days. So pretty much business as usual in the Yashiro Commission, huh? Very much so. Any more questions? You're very welcome. In fact, I would love nothing more than for you to come and visit more often. But I'm sure you must be far too busy to have time for that. Miss Kamisato talks about you all the time. She seems so thrilled to have you as a friend, and she's always saying how talented you are and how much she admires you. I must say, many things in Inazuma seem to have taken a turn for the better since you arrived here. So you're not just Miss Kamisato's knight in shining armor, you know. You're a hero to us all. All right, goodbye for now. We're, uh... Where are we going next? Great! Goodbye, ma'am. Don't worry, we'll see ourselves out. All right, then. Take care now. Hope to see you soon. Oh, are you two leaving already? Yep, everything's taken care of now. Don't worry. Very well. Safe travels. Goodbye. Oh my god, I fucking hate this bullshit. So, how much of this do I have to do?
trial version. Uh, I love how he keeps mentioning that. Go. It is it wasn't uh, planning on doing all this and with OBS freaking out on me I think I'll give it a rest for now I meant to stream longer today but I'll uh, do this and finish off in version of Genesis next time So yeah, I'll do the Terra Tales and inversion of Genesis. Actually, how long is the Terra Tales? Okay, never mind, it's pretty hardcore apparently. Yeah, Fox, I think what I may end up doing is uh, just doing quick start next time maybe. And getting the, and getting the event over with. I don't have to worry about it. I guess the Terra Tales, I got, it says here, oh, I've got to complete the Terra Tales before I can finish it, because it's, it's busy completing the quest. Not as busy in the quest. So I think you've got to complete it before it's available. And I think that makes sense because I'm pretty sure I've got to go into the bubble. And I need to complete this quest to unlock the bubble. So yeah. Ah, boy, pain in the ass, but yeah. I gotta say, uh, I do enjoy questing in this game, but I don't. I don't enjoy when. Uh... There's a was a really loud think, vehicle passing by. But as I was saying, I don't enjoy when one quest interferes with another. That kind of ruins it when I've got a. Oh, I get invested in a quest, then as I'm doing it, I gotta stop do another one. That's kind of the worst part of the game, I'd say, honestly. Thank you. 
Holy fuck those vehicles today. So yeah, currently on uh, 120, I'm... How far am I from a 5 star? Got a lot of fucking Dories, I fucking hate that. Not a single Ayla. Ten. So, that's... Effectively, I'm 46 there, I believe. So I'm not even sure I'm guaranteed to get the thing with Baiju. Well, I'm not guaranteed on Baiju regardless, because my last... Come to those who don't because my last uh, five star was a limited banner one Ayaka. <laughs> anyway, I saw you when I was up there. Heard you, but don't know where to look for you. Yep. Oh boy. Anyway, yeah, uh, so this stream isn't going as I was intended, and my OBS is fucking up on me. So I think I'll call it quits here. After I get this chest. I guess we'll call it now for a break, and uh, so I'll try to, I'll do Tower Tales next time.